Okay, let's get into this. We've all uh, we've all had that moment, right? Staring at some really vague tech error, just mm -hmm. completely unhelpful. Mm -hmm. And you get that little voice, just reinstall, clean slate, it'll fix everything. You know, that's the dream. Yeah, the dream of hitting reset and poof, everything just works perfectly. So, Smooth sailing. Exactly. But, well, the reality, it's usually pretty messy, a bit of a headache, especially when you're dealing with... Um, virtual machines, complex servers, that kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. That idea of a clean reinstall, yeah. it sounds easy, but wow, it can open up a whole new can of worms. And our source today, it's all about that, isn't it? A Proxmox user's uh, adventure. Yeah. They hit one of those, you know, really obscure errors. Timed out waiting for UDEV queue being empty. <laughs> Sounds pretty ominous. Doesn't it? Like something from a sci-fi movie when the ship's computer is failing. I bet our, uh, our pioneer felt a bit of a jolt seeing that. I would think so. A bit of dread, maybe. Definitely relate to that. So our mission today for this deep dive is really to walk you through that kind of journey. Specifically, what happens when your existing data volumes kind of vanish into, well, digital limbo after you reinstall Proxmox? Mm -hmm. We're using a real world story here. Someone who actually went through this, figured out how to reconnect those you know, vital data disks back to their VMs after a restore. And it's bigger than just Proxmox, really. It touches on how you find those solutions that aren't obvious, mm. you know, when your whole digital setup gets shaken up. Right. So this deep dive, think of it as uh, a shortcut. Essential knowledge if you're managing Proxmox, especially if you do the smart thing, and keep your system disks separate from your data disks. That's such a key point. Mm. And stick with us because you're going to get some really practical, actionable tricks today. Things that could genuinely save you hours, maybe even days of painful rebuilding. Yeah, imagine avoiding having to re-download massive data sets or setting up VMs all over again from scratch. Exactly. So yeah, essential stuff for Proxmox users. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Okay, so picture this setup from our source. A pretty capable Proxmox node, right? Mm -hmm. System on a uh, 500 gig SATA SSD. Mm -hmm. Then the VM volumes themselves, they are on a faster, beefier 4 terabyte NVMe drive. Nice. And then for the really big files, a massive 16 terabyte spinning hard drive. Running all sorts, Windows file server, home assistant, the usual suspects in a home lab. Sounds like a solid setup. Everything running smoothly until... Until that UDEV Q air crashed the party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, like we all do, our pioneer tried the usual fixes, poked around. Usual dance. Right. And eventually they went for the uh, the nuclear option, full Proxmox reinstall. The clean slate approach. Which, interestingly, didn't fix the original error right away. Instead, it kind of created this new problem, a really confusing one. Ah, uh, okay. So this is where our main story begins. Exactly. How do you reconnect those existing NVMe and HTD volumes to the VMs you just restored? Yeah. Because look, they had backups, right? Veeam for the VMs, data backed up elsewhere. Good practices. Arr. But re-downloading terabytes, just not practical not an option really no way so okay even with good backups the challenge becomes reintegrating that existing huge data store after you've wiped and reinstalled the underlying system precisely so the pioneer re-adds their storage pools lvm thin in this case which is you know that flexible way proxmox handles virtual disk space right lets things grow dynamically yeah and they restore the vms using veeam the OS disks, they pop right back up. Perfect. Okay, good start. But the data volumes, the big ones on the NVMe and the HDD, uh-huh, uh -huh, just <laughs> gone, not attached to the VMs. So Proxmox could see the storage pools. It knew the disk images were there on the drives. Yes. It could see them listed in the storage view, but it just wouldn't let you attach them to a VM in the hardware tab. Yeah. They were just absent. That sounds incredibly frustrating. And they looked online for solutions. Yeah. And apparently didn't find much for this exact situation, <laughs> which is weird, right? You'd think someone else had hit this. And then it got even stranger with one specific VM, the Home Assistant one. After restoring it, it showed four volumes listed in the storage pool, two new ones from the restore. Okay. And two old ones from before the reinstall. Ghosts, basically. Whoa. So these old ones were just hanging around. Hanging around in the storage pool list, but totally invisible in the VM's actual hardware settings. Mm. Just nowhere to be found there. And could they delete them? Nope. Tried that. Proxmox threw an error, something like, cannot remove image, a guest VM by exists. You can delete the image from the guest's hardware pane. But it wasn't in the hardware pane. Exactly. You can't delete it from a place it doesn't appear. Total catch-22. Mm. You can just imagine the hair pulling. Your data's right there. But you can't touch it, can't delete the old copies. Yeah. Man, that's peak Proxmox sometimes, isn't it? Those moments where you're just stuck. It really is. One of those figured out yourself moments, like you ah. said. You're just caught between the error message and, well, 
reality. So persistence paid off, forum diving. Absolutely. Deep dive into the forums and eventually dot bingo. The breakthrough. Okay, here we go. The first big trick. What was it? It boils down to uh, manually editing a configuration file. Mm. Turns out every single VM in Proxmox has its own little config file. Right, the vmid.com file. Exactly, stored in its set of pre a VGMU server. And that file, it's like the VM's blueprint, its DNA, contains all the settings. Okay, so what did they have to change? For their Windows file server, for example, they had to go into that VM's con file, so 101.com for whatever its ID was, and literally type in lines to tell Proxmox about the existing data disk. Ah, manually specifying the connection. Precisely. Something like SciC1, NVMA 4TB.VM 101 disk 3, discard AO thread 1 size 2900. You're telling it, use SCSI controller 1, look at the NVMA 4TB storage pool for the image name VM 101 disk 3, here's its size, and add some performance options like discard and IO thread. So basically hard coding the link between the VM and its old data disk. You got it. They saved the file, went back to the Proxmox web UI. Bam. Like magic, the disk just appeared in the VM's hardware tab, ready to go. Problem solved for that machine. Wow. Okay, that's huge. But it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Why isn't there a button for that in the GUI? Reconnect existing volume or something? That is the million-dollar question, isn't yeah. it? Maybe it's like a philosophy thing, giving you the power but expecting you to know the underlying system. Or maybe it's just an edge case the UI hasn't quite caught up with yet. Could be. It feels a bit less polished than maybe VMware or Hyper-V in that specific scenario, perhaps, where you might just browse and attach. Perhaps. But hey, it worked. And apparently the Proxmox community thought this fix was pretty clever, even calling it legendary in the forum thread. I can see why. It's a fantastic example of needing to go under the hood sometimes. Direct config edits saving the day. But that wasn't the end of the story, was it? What about those ghost disks? Ah, yes. The lingering phantoms from the Home Assistant VM. They were still there, cluttering up the storage list. Undeletable. Right. Couldn't delete them from the hardware tab because they weren't there. Exactly. This is where the second critical trick comes into play. Another command line gem. Okay, a little on us. The command is QM is disk rescan. Simple as that. You run it in the Proxmox shell. QM disk rescan, and what does that do? It basically tells Proxmox, hey, go take a fresh look at all the disks associated with VMs. Re-index everything. Think of it like clearing a cache or forcing a database refresh for disk states. Ah, okay. So if Proxmox got confused during the reinstall and restore, this command makes it reevaluate the actual state of things. It scans for any disks that might be orphaned or incorrectly linked or, you know, just kind of lost in the system's internal tracking. And the result for those ghost disks? They suddenly appeared. But not attached, they showed up in the Home Assistant VM's hardware tab as unused disks. Uh huh. So now they were visible in the place the error message told you to look. Precisely. And once they're listed there as unused, you can finally select them and click detach or delete or whatever you need to do, clean them right up. That is brilliant. Simple, but absolutely crucial if you're stuck in that situation. I can see why the community loved that tip, too. Save me hours, you said. Yeah, comments like usable post, saved me hours, finally fixed it. It really underscores that sometimes the command line holds the key, even if it's not immediately obvious. It really does. Critical thinking, knowing where to look, or even just how to ask the right question on a forum, right? Absolutely. In this flood of information, finding the right nugget is key. Okay, so let's bring this back to you, the listener. This whole story, this pioneer's journey, it's not just, you know, an interesting anecdote. It's really a practical playbook. If you're running Proxmarks, and especially if you're following best practices like separating system and data drives, which, yeah, you probably should be. Definitely should. Then doing a reinstall, even though it seems easy, can throw you this specific curveball with the data volumes. Knowing these two tricks we just talked about, that could save you a world of pain. So let's quickly recap those core takeaways. Trick number one, don't be afraid to manually edit that VM config file. Right, it's set a pvcmu-servervmid.conf. Get in there and add the lines to reattach those existing volumes. Low level control. Yep. And trick number two, when disks seem weird, missing, or like ghosts you can't delete, run QM a disk rescan in the shell first. QM disk rescan? It forces Proxmox to find those orphan disks and makes them appear as unused disks in the hardware tab. Then you can manage them properly. Those two are your absolute go-tos for this specific problem. Your new best friends in Proxmox troubleshooting, maybe. Definitely. 
But you know, this whole adventure, this source material, it taught us more than just those two commands, didn't it? There were some broader uh, quick tips that came out of it. Oh, for sure. Some timeless wisdom in there. Like number one has to be backups, right? The Pioneer had them. Smart backups. Using Veeam maybe for the system disks, but having that bulk data safe somewhere else, like cloud storage, mm -hmm. it's just crucial. Non-negotiable, really. And then learning your way around that VM config file, that .conf file, like having a secret weapon. A Swiss army knife, yeah. For when the GUI just doesn't cut it. And related to that, yeah, run QMA disk rescan before you spend hours pulling your hair out over phantom disks. Just try it first. It's so simple. So simple, could save so much time. And then there's the classic advice. It applies everywhere, really. Write things down, seriously. Document your setup, document weird fixes you find. Your future self will thank you profusely. Oh, absolutely. Future you is always grateful for past used notes. And finally, what about just the overall mindset with Broxmox? I think it's about embracing the quirks, you know? It's incredibly powerful, open mm -hmm. source, flexible, but yeah, maybe not always perfectly polished in every corner case. Right, and that's where the community comes in. Exactly, the forums, the official <laughs> documentation, they are gold mines. That's where these hidden gems, these non-obvious solutions mm -hmm. often get shared and discovered. People helping people. Yeah, so this pioneer's journey, it's a great reminder. Proxmox is powerful, solutions exist, but they might not always be staring you in the face. They might not be a single click. Mm -hmm. But they are out there. You just might need to dig a bit, be persistent. It encourages that mindset, doesn't it? Persistent mm. exploration, problem solving. So maybe a final thought for you listening. Think about your own tech setups, whatever they are. What other you know, hidden gems or non-obvious tricks might be lurking just beneath the surface waiting for you to uncover them? Yeah, keep exploring, keep digging. Uh, and hopefully your disks will always show up right where you expect them to be. Couldn't have said it better myself. Keep digging. <laughs>